No long intro, we have no time. This information is really important. In fact, I'm actually not gonna be editing this at all, so get ready. Five tips that you absolutely need to be knowing for the Overwatch Season 9. Um, there's gonna be a couple of things. One thing for tank, one thing for DPS, one thing for support, and two things are gonna apply to all the roles equally, so keep that in mind. First thing we're gonna talk about is tank players. Tank players, you must understand the impact of this DPS passive. It's frustrating, it's difficult, it's something that might be adjusted and changed in the future, but as of right now, it's gonna punish people that do not do a good job of soft resetting. What I mean by that is with tank, generally, especially with dive tanks, but really with every tank, brawl tanks included, there's going to be moments where you engage, where you disengage, you use your cooldowns, and you go back out again. I see way too many low to mid and even high rank tanks standing here in the, mo uh, in the open, staying engaged when they don't have full HP or when they don't have cooldowns, just kind of poking and poking and poking and poking and poking and poking, and, poking, and, you're, and you're playing Junker Queen, and you're losing HP, and you're playing your Macho, and you're losing HP, or you're playing Winston, and you just use your bubble, and you really just want to peek for that right click at 300 HP. Do not do that. Utilize your cooldowns to get pressure, then disengage and soft reset. Push in, soft reset, push in, soft reset. With very few exceptions, I guess Sigma would be a possible exception. Most of the tanks need to be soft resetting. Otherwise, the DPS passive, that 20% heal reduction is gonna be an absolute murder for you to heal you back up to full. Your support's gonna have to spend that ent entire time, excuse me, healing you um, because the DPS passive is constantly proc. Remember, the DPS passive lasts two seconds. If you go in for a dive, you pressure, you pressure, 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 then disengage, fully disengage, you know, wait for your next bubble. Don't sit here and standing out in the open and continuing to pressure. Utilize that time to reset and allow your supports to actually heal you back to full because it'll be significantly easier to heal you back to full so that you can fully reset back in with full HP and with no DPS passive. You can't fully avoid the DPS passive, but when you're not really doing anything significant as a tank, that's the time to fully reset as a character and not to continue to poke and prod and just be a total leech under your supports resources. Next thing with uh, DPS, uh, make sure that you're utilizing the new heal passive. I like to see this as the second DPS passive because really the DPS are going to be using this significantly more than the supports for tanks because the supports already had it and the tanks don't really use it. So this means that the five, uh, the five second 20 HPS heal out when you're out of combat. In other words, if I don't take damage for five seconds, I heal myself for 20 healing per second. Utilize this to open up deeper angles. Um, when I was playing Cassidy, when I was playing Hanzo, when I was playing Genji, when I was playing some of the flankers like Sombra and Tracer, I was already on the flanks of those characters, so it didn't really affect my playstyle all that much. But when I moved to those Ga Cassidy's, the Genji's, and the Hanzo's, I realized that I could actually take so many more deeper flanks without necessarily needing support uh, if I could just had a cover to be able to disengage. Three, two, one, a little bit of healing back. Okay, and they keep poking here. Even characters like Sojourn benefit from this a lot. This should mean that you are going to be slightly more aggressive and more self sufficient with the angles that you take. If you're utilizing this new heal passive and you're just standing by in your tank 24 7, for most characters, that's going to be absolutely trolling. There's going to be a lot of situations with more aggressive off angles, deeper angles in the backline, onto the sideline, especially if you have some form of cover to disengage. Five seconds is not really that long of a time in Overwatch. You know, you could shoot a couple of shots, they shoot some shots at you, they miss. Three, two, one, get a little bit of healing back. Okay, then I pick up some shots again. I've healed 30, 40. Uh, I mean, that's a lot, guys. And you could do that over and over and over again. I found myself being able to be a lot more self-sufficient with Genji um, and all the DPS, really, even the slower DPS, just because of this passive. So please abuse this. It is your DPS passive. It's nothing that the other roles will be using. Utilize it, because if you don't, the other roles will. Moving on to support. Um, really, really important. <laughs> Do not sit there and dump healing into a tank over and over and over and over again, especially if they're doing what I said not to do earlier and just standing there absorbing damage. Your survivability and your team's survivability now more than ever comes from your kit and your damage. I guess damage falling into the kit category. Your shift, even your regenerative burst, things like anything that's raw healing is going to feel a little bit worse, not just because of the DPS passive but also because the healing has not been buffed to compensate for the larger health pools. The larger health pool is the survivability, raw healing is not. Things like Immortality Field, Suzu, and so on are still good, but utilize your kits beyond just your healing to actually get value. If I'm playing Baptiste and all I'm doing is healing and healing and healing and healing and healing and not putting out any pressure to abuse those new projectile sizes, then you're actually absolutely trolling. Same thing with a character like Ana. Nade is maybe a little bit weaker with a larger health pools, but it's still an unbelievably effective uh, use of uh, pressure. And same thing with Sleep Dart. Still does just as much as it was before. My shots are even easier to land, right? Look at that. Okay, this is not a good example. Shot. Maybe this is the opposite of practice range abusing. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at that. There's so many ways to abuse this kit. And if all I'm doing is just dumping massive projectiles into my healing, uh, into my targets that are already 20% debuffed over and over and over again, you're going to be losing a lot more games. And this was true in Overwatch 2 prior to these changes. It's even more true now. Healing is less effective, but your kit remains the same. And now it's even easier than ever to hit shots. Make sure that you're using that, not just on characters like On and Zen, but dare I say, Mercy? There are situations where they're Valking Mercy 
in the right hands isn't just a troll and funny thing that Boger does, but it's actually really, really good. Like the headshot hitboxing this character is insane. Use this. I can't believe I'm saying this, but actually use this in certain situations. And even a character like Life Weaver benefited a lot from the projectile size, uh, the projectile size changes. Like it is actually significantly easier to get headshots now. So there will be times where just raw healing over and over and over and over again is not going to be the play. But the rest of your kit is still functional just as much as it was. So make sure to use that. So that's it for the roll stuff. There's going to be two tips, one for each. Uh, well, just one for each, uh, two total for anybody, one for each role. I'd say a little bit more focused, but I think that honestly, these, these can apply to everybody. So for the cover usage, I want to talk about mostly supports here and DPS, but really this would apply to tanks as well. Make sure that you're utilizing cover. Uh, it's so much easier to get shots down, landed. It's so much easier. I find myself so many times on really all characters, DPS support, and even to an extent tank, I find myself going, oh, I'm, I'm dead. I, I did not realize that they could kill me that fast because... <laughs> In their attempt to try and reduce burst damage, I actually think that it's been in some ways um, just as easy to get bursted down just because you're going to find yourself getting hit by shots that you didn't think would land. Uh, and I think that these hitbox changes are a great example of sometimes you're going to feel like you're invulnerable and sometimes you're just going to absolutely melt. Regardless of how that goes, please make sure that you're utilizing cover at all times because if that Cassidy hits a shot that you didn't think you would hit, if you're not immediately able to disengage from that Cassidy, then you are going to die. And there were so many times where I died on DPS and support specifically, but again, tank as well, when I just was a little too far from cover because I just didn't expect them to hit those shots. That's going to be the norm moving forward, even in lower ranks. So keep that in mind. The last one is going to be a little bit more focused on uh, DPS and tank, but it will apply uh, to supports as well. Please, please, please remember that a tank that is using a defensive cooldown and is basically full HP is really not an attractive target in Overwatch 2. It is already easy to shoot a fortified Orisa. It was already easy to shoot into a D.Va or a Roadhog or a Royenheit where the, uh, his shield. Please make sure that you're utilizing the, the, the DPS passive on tanks that you can, but remember that your projectiles overall are easier to hit versus everybody. So if I'm playing Cassidy and I'm like, man, these projectiles feel massive and I'm just dumping shots into a Rhine shield, please be very careful about your focus on tank, especially when that tank has defensive cooldowns. Now, if you're shooting a Roadhog and you're keeping that DPS passive proc, or you're shooting a Malg and you're keeping that DPS passive proc, I get it. But if you're shooting again into a Winston bubble over and over and over again, when he's completely out of your fall off range or a Primaling Winston or a Wrecking Ball or a Zarya with bubbles or a Macho with Nemesis at full HP, and there are other targets available and easy to kill. This is the least efficient use of your buff to projectile sizes. There are lots of times when shooting a tank is good. Many times you'll be shooting a tank is good. Most of the time you might even be shooting a tank. But in a lot of my ranked games on my team and people I were playing versus, it was still unbelievable how many people were focused on focus tank, focus tank, even though I had full CDs, full HP, full ways of mitigating that DPS passive. Meanwhile, my backline was like right there. And, and you could have been, you could have literally two tapped my mercy right there. Like, what's wrong with you guys? And there were so many games that I lost because of what my team did. And honestly, even myself, like it's hard to break that habit of not focusing tank. So yes, the DPS passive does mean, oh, I can focus tank and prevent the tank from getting healed. Hooray. But it's actually even more important that you're utilizing the projectile sizes to actually secure kills on squishies that you otherwise would not have been able to shoot. Really important that you get that balance right. And crucially, that's why I said defensive cooldown. Shooting a Malga that's standing out in the open, man, just keep shooting that guy. Like you're gonna be able to melt him down and the DPS passive is gonna make it really hard for him to be healed back up again. However, like I said, Fortified Orisa, Reinhardt, Shield, uh, even something like, a, a, a div, uh, I'm trying to think here, a Sigma, right? A Sigma is gonna be actually pretty hard to like actually effectively maintain the DPS passive on. And even if you do, he has so much shielding and so much defensive utility that it's generally not going to be always your most important target if there are other targets to shoot. So that's a burning wise why I think the Wrecking Ball uh, has felt a lot better despite not receiving any buffs at all. He's felt a lot better for good players simply because his hitbox is already easy to shoot. He doesn't really rely off of his team's healing. And so I see so many people focusing on Wrecking Ball and I'm like, man, unless your character has some sort of CC or crazy burst, stop shooting the Wrecking Ball. Find something else that you could burst down instead, at least when it's, there's other targets available. So anyway, that's all I've really got here. Please make sure that you're focusing down the right targets. Please make sure that you're using cover. Tanks players, soft disengage to wipe that DPS passive to allow your support to heal you back to full. Supports, use your kit, use your damage. Don't just heal bot. More so than ever before. DPS, utilize your effective second DPS passive without a passive healing out of time. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Obviously, I know a lot of questions about what's good, what's bad, what do I think of the, the, the meta overall. I don't know. I don't know. It's too early to say. We'll play it by ear. I'll let you know what you think when I get there. Cheers.